Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In my first video, I posted a ship and claimed that it had no ladders. And then this happened. So today we're fixing that mistake. And I'll show you how to block ladders from appearing in specific spots that you don't want them to appear. We're also gonna make some updates to the original build with new halves and an updated style. I took some features I liked from my other builds and incorporated those in this design. So let's get building the Vengeance Mark II. This is still a Class C ship, so you'll need your piloting skill at rank four, and you should have your starship design skill at rank four as well, and be at least level 60 to access all the parts. Now, before we begin, a disclaimer. These builds are designed to serve as general guides for shipbuilding. You can follow these builds exactly or use them as inspiration for your own designs. If there are design elements that you feel could be improved or other parts you prefer to use, feel free to modify this build however you like. Let your creativity run wild. Now let's start the build. We're starting off a new Atlantis. Since the ship will require some specialty parts not found on your outpost shipbuilder, we'll be heading to a few planets to pick up some of the parts. But first, we need a ship to build off of. The new Atlantis ship technician has my favorite one to start with, the Rambler. This is an inexpensive ship that's easy to modify. Let's pick that up and head to our next destination. First, we're heading over to the Soul System. We have a couple stops here, but our first one is a new homestead on Titan. Once on the ground, head to the ship builder and let's modify our ship. We need three specific pieces from here. We are picking up the Cabot C4 bridge, a two by two living quarters, and seven NG20 landing gears, specifically the wide variant. So let's grab those pieces. Okay, now that we have those pieces, let's fit them on our ship. Generally, you wanna fit them wherever you can as long as the ship is flyable in the end. It doesn't have to look good, just be flyable. Okay, we're done here. Let's head to our next stop. Our next stop is the Deimos Shipyards in the same system. So let's head over and visit them. Once on board, head down the hallway, turn slightly left, and head around the corner and down the stairs. Talk to the rather stern looking bald man in front of you and let's continue to modify our ship. We only need one piece from here, the two by two battle station. Purchase that and attach it to our ship. That's it, just a quick trip. Now off to our next stop, which is Neon.
we're heading over to the volley system. Hey, question for you all. How do you actually pronounce the name of the system? I've heard it volley, vol I, or even volley I. Comment below how you think this should be pronounced. Regardless on how you pronounce it, we're heading to Neon. Once in the city, turn left, head over to the Stroud Eklund showroom. Interact with the console on the wall and let's edit the ship. We need a few more pieces from here. The main thing we're gonna need are the engines. You want the Sal 6330 engines. If you have completed the quest, all that money can buy, then you should get the Sal 6830 engines instead. These will give you a little bit more thrust and improve your mobility. I haven't finished that quest on this playthrough, so I'm just gonna get the 6330s instead. We'll also need a Pinch 8Z reactor as we're putting on Class C engines on the ship, and we need three Stroud mid-bracers. These are gonna be used to fit the engines on our ship. We're also gonna be using them later in this build, so might as well get them now. Now that we have all our parts, let's fit them on our ship. Remove any unnecessary parts and attach our new ones. You may need to move some of the stuff around to get things to fit and attach. It doesn't matter where it goes, as long as the ship is flyable. Now that we have all of those parts, let's head to our outpost to finish our build. My outpost is located in the Schrodinger system, so we're heading there. Now that we have landed on our outpost, let's go interact with our ship panel over by our stairs. Select the option to modify your ship and let's finish the build. The rest of the parts are gonna come from here. So I'm gonna put the list on screen now. Pause the video here and let's get shopping. Okay. We got all the parts, and I also pulled all the other parts we purchased off the other ship and deleted the unnecessary pieces. Here is our starting layout. Pause the video here and make sure you have all the pieces. Okay, let's begin the build. We're gonna start with our bridge. So let's move that over to our open space. The first module we're going to attach is our armory, which is gonna be our entry point. The armory is gonna to connect to the bottom hook point in the middle of the bridge. This will allow us to enter the armory and head to the bridge from there. Now how we're gonna to connect to the rest of the ship is through our control station. So let's bring that over to our ship. The problem is, if we just connect the control station like normal, 
the builder is going to force a ladder to appear on one of the top two hook points of the armory. That's what happened to our original ship. So how do we fix it so that we don't get any ladders? The first thing we need to do is block off those top two hook points on the armory. For that, we're going to use our portholes. Take your two portholes and attach those to the top of the armory. That will close off those hook points and the builder will not generate a ladder there as it thinks it should be portholes. Now we can take our control station and place it just above the armory. You notice it will turn red as those portholes are in the way. What we are going to do is use a version of our glitch trick to get this to fit. Now, halves are not flippable like structure pieces are. So what we're going to do instead is while holding our right mouse button, we're going to change the variant on this piece. So if I change the variant to the computer core, and then back to the control station, then release my mouse button and click escape. You will see the piece fits right in. And since so we put down those portholes first, we will not get any ladders spawning where we don't want them. Now, to give credit where credit's due, I found this trick on the Lindsay's Gaming channel. He has an awesome channel showing off all the different parts for shipbuilding, so go give him a like and a follow. Next, let's take our landing bay and connect that. I'm putting this on the starboard side of the ship as that seems to be where you usually spawn when quick traveling. The landing bay needs to be connected to the first hook point behind the bridge on the armory, as we're going to need the room on the other side for later. Now let's finish with the hab layout. We're going to start with the Nova living quarters. Now we have to place this in a very specific position. This hab has a pretty awesome pool table in it, which is located on the bottom left corner of the hab. So we don't want any connections on that corner or else the table will disappear. So we're going to connect the bottom right corner to the control station. And since we don't have any connections on the bottom left corner, our pool table will be intact. Next, we're just going to bring down the Dimos battle station and place that right where it's going to go. There's nothing to attach it to just yet, but we're just getting it into position. Now, the outer edge of our battle station is going to be exposed on our ship. So what we're going to do is take out the computer core, which is also Dimos, and put that on the other side of the ship. Now we have our workshop and our captain's quarters left. It's up to you which hab you place where in the layout, as long as they go in the specific spots to complete our layout. I'm going to take the workshop and place that over to the left of our living quarters. Once done, then I can attach the battle station to the workshop. The captain's quarters are going to go just behind the living quarters on the other side, and then the computer core gets attached to that. And we can see our hab layout is now finished. Now I picked up these habs because I think they have the best interiors. You can use any habs you like as long as the layout remains the same. The only real important part in my opinion is the outermost habs need to be from the same manufacturers as they're going to be exposed on this build. The next section we're going to add is our drive section. The three pieces are going to be connected together in a line. It doesn't matter too much which pieces go where, as long as the reactor is at the top. Once we have them together, let's move them towards the back of the ship, and they're going to go in the open spot in between the halves. Once they're in place, you want to make sure the top of the drive section is even with the top of the halves. Now that the drive section is in place, we're going to start building the bottom of the ship. For that, we need our cargo holds. And we're also going to need our landing gears. Let's rotate the camera so we're looking at the bottom of the ship. This makes it easier to lay out the pieces. We're going to start with our landing gears. These are going to go across the bottom towards the back. 
take two of the NG-20s and place them on the back of the ship next to the fuel tank. Take two more and place them on the other side. Next, we're gonna place our cargo holds. We're gonna place four down, one in front of every landing gear we just placed. The last two need to go in front of the inner two cargo holds, as we need the hook points on the sides to connect our landing gears. Now take two more landing gears and place them next to the cargo holds we just placed. We have one more NG-20 to place, and that is gonna go in the middle of the ship on the two x two hab you should have an empty space between the gear and the grav drive. We'll fill that in later. Let's fill in the bottom of the ship a little bit more. So let's bring down some other pieces into the work area. Take two of the one-spaced Stroud cowlings and bring them down. We're gonna take one, flip it so the narrow part is facing the outside of the ship, and that will go in front of the cargo holds, like so. Let's repeat the process on the other side, remembering to flip the piece so the narrow part is facing out. Now we're gonna place the last two landing gears, which are the Acculander 11s. Again, make sure the narrow side is facing out and place that in front of the piece we just placed. Do the same on the other side of the ship. Now, grab one more of the one space Stroud cowlings and bring that over. We're actually going to use this to fill in the empty spot under the ship between the grav drive and the landing gear. You could use any non-hab one by one piece here you want. A Stroud mid-bracer would probably work well here, as would a Nova bracer. I just use this as it has a flatter profile. You could also add another cargo hold here, but you're going to lose more mobility, and we're already down low on this build. Next, we're going to place our engines. We're going to mount four across the back, and the tops should be even with the tops of the halves. The last two are gonna go above the two inner engines. We're just gonna get them in place right now. Now, to attach those, we're gonna use the Dimos Hull A pieces. Take one and put that on top of the hab right next to the fuel tank. Place the other one on the opposite side. Now we can take our engines and attach those to the hull pieces. Now the engines are attached, we see we still have that open top hook point on the engines. We're gonna close that off by using our Hope Tech pipes. Take one of those and put it on top of the Dimos hull piece. If we zoom in a little, we can see this blends to that engine rather nicely. Now let's adjust our camera a little bit before we continue our build. Let's fill in that open area just behind the bridge. Take one of the one space Stroud cowlings and let's slide that into that open spot. Now blend everything together for the bottom section. Now that the ship is coming together a little bit, we're gonna pre-make some other parts just to make them easier to attach later. We're gonna start with our weapon mounts. It's easier to build the weapon mounts now versus after they're attached to the ship. I'm going to take the PB-175s, and those are going to go on the inside of the weapon mounts. Next, I will take the PBOs and attach those to the outside of the weapon mounts. It's definitely easier to attach those weapons now, 
Plus, you can just click and drag the whole placement around without having to double click on the piece like you normally do. Now that those are built, let's pre-build some other pieces. We're going to start with the top of the ship. Take the three Stroud mid-bracers and attach those in a vertical line. Next, take the three spaced Stroud cowlings and attach those on either side of the mid bracers. Now, take one of the nose cap bees and attach that to the front of the mid bracers. Now, take the rear facing Stroud cap seeds and attach that to the back of the mid bracer. Next, we're going to take two Stroud cap A's and attach those on either side of the front of the structure. That completes our top piece. Let's move that out of the way and continue building more pieces. The next pieces we need to build are the wings of the ship. Each wing is gonna consist of four of the cap A's and two of the one space Stroud cowlings. Start with one cap A, and let's move that down. Now take a second cap A and flip it so it will fit under the first piece. Now let's take one of the cowlings and I like to change the variant here. I just like the stripe at the top. You don't have to do this if you don't want that. Now take the other cowling, flip it so it's facing down and we're gonna attach that under our first cowling. Now we can connect the two together just like that. Now we need to create the back end of the piece. This is the same as that front piece we just built, but we need to change the variant on the cap A's so they're facing backwards. Once the back piece is built, we can attach it to the others. That completes our wing piece. Now we need to build one more of these, but a mirror image of the one we just built. Now that our wings are assembled, we can attach them to the ship. Let's move our top piece out of the way, and then move our ship over to give us some room. Let's move one of the wings to the other side of the ship. And now let's attach this wing. Now this wing needs to be placed at a specific hook point. The middle hook point of the wing needs to be attached to the front hook point of the hab. We need to do this as we'll need some of the front hook points for later. So let's attach that wing section to the hab, like so. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Now that those are attached, we're going to take a couple of the one space cowlings and those are going to go in front of the open space just behind the bridge. Do the same on the other side, flipping the pieces so they are facing the opposite direction. Next, we're going to attach the weapon mounts. Those are going to go in between the wing sections and the main body. So let's grab our weapon mount, and you can see there's only one hook point to attach it to. So let's slide it on in there, and you can see it fits nice and snug. This is why it's better to pre-build these. If we attach the mounts first, and then try to add the weapons later, the builder is going to try to snap those weapons to all those different hook points inside the wing, making it rather difficult to build. 
The next thing we're going to want to do is hide those weapons inside the wings. We're going to do this by glitching pieces into place. First, we're going to start with one of the Stroud Cowlings. Let's flip that so it's upside down and the darker edge is facing outwards. Now take that piece and slide it into the same space as the weapon mount. Now, while holding your right mouse button, we're going to flip the piece four times so it's back to its original starting position. Once done, release your mouse button and hit escape to lock it in place. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Now you can see a little bit of the weapon mount sticking out, so we're gonna fully hide the weapons. For that, we're gonna need the nose cap bees. So take two of those and bring those down to the ship. Now we're gonna take one of those nose caps and it will attach to the front of the piece we just placed. We're gonna use the same glitch trick to place it. Once that is in place, we can take the last nose piece, flip it so it's upside down, now we'll just go under the other piece. Once done, we can see our weapons are fully hidden. They'll still fire like normal, but they're going to be hidden from view. Let's do the same thing on the other side of the ship. Now let's take that top cap that we built and we're going to attach that. That's gonna go directly on top of the ship. The rear facing piece is going to slide in between the Dimos hull pieces and the cowlings will attach to the front of those pieces. Now that that piece is on, we just have a couple pieces left. Take your shield generator and that will attach to the top of the ship in the middle towards the back. Our docker is going to go under the ship, so let's flip it so it's facing down, and then move our camera under the ship. We want our docker in line with the landing bay, so let's place it in the first hook point behind the bridge. The last pieces we need to attach are the auto cannons. First, we need to attach the equipment plates so we have something to mount the cannons to. These are going to go on the exposed halves, two on each side. Now that those are attached, we can add in the auto cannons. We're gonna mount two on each side, one set facing forward and one set facing backwards. Now our ship is built, but we still have an error because we need to assign the weapons. So let's assign those. The only thing I would recommend is that you assign the auto cannons to the W2 spot. On PC, this is the G key by default, and it's an awkward key to press while piloting. So it's easier just to assign the auto cannons here. The other weapons can be assigned however you wish. I always fire them together, so it really doesn't matter. And since we are here, we can rename the ship. We're naming this the Vengeance Mark II.
and you know we cannot keep that factory color. So let's customize that. I'm going to go with a white and black vibe here. Feel free to color this one however you wish though. Now our ship is complete. So let's go take a tour and check out the inside. As we make our way around the ship, you can see this is a wide ship. Our landing bay is just on the side here. I like this landing bay as it has both a ramp and stairs, which is very handicap friendly. Once we enter the ship, we can see we have no ladder leading to the upper level. Instead, we have this interesting window to the upper level, which I kind of like. Now, the only downside is that every ship docker in the game will place at least part of a ladder, as you can see here. I really wish there was some way to remove that. Maybe that'll be something someone will mod out for us. I'm not counting that as a ladder, as it's not functional at all. As we head to the back of the hab, you can see we have a big armory with lots of weapon racks for us to fill up. If you are a weapon collector, this hab is for you. We not only have weapon racks, but a bunch of cases laying around too. There's plenty of storage here. As we exit the armory, we can go up the stairs to the bridge. This is a nice wide open bridge. There are plenty of windows here for a great view. It has a nice sunroof style ceiling and a big front window. If you like flying your ship in first person mode, this ship is for you. Exiting the bridge brings you to the control station. It's nice and clean with a good layout. And now we have our living area. Again, this is nice, clean, and open. We have a bed here if you need a nap, a good workout area with a squat rack and a bench, and a nice little motivational poster on the back wall there. On the other side, we have a nice little table if you want to do some work. And now we have our pool table. This is why we chose this hab. There's also a dartboard back there and a bunch of TVs. It's almost set up like a little sports bar in this corner. We have another table here with a nice little couch against the wall. And on the other side, we have a kitchen area with the ever important coffee maker. Through the door in front of us, we have our captain's quarters. We have another coffee maker here, so I can have my own. We have our bed, a nice desk for a work area, and a little meeting area in the back. There's a nice big nav console and a big TV here. I really wish we can customize the interiors as I would get rid of the shelving here and put a couch against this wall. Through this door, we have our computer room. I like the lighting in this room as it fits the computer room theme as it's dimmer than the other habs. As we go back out and cross over to the other side, through the door, we enter the workshop. Now, the reason why I chose this particular workshop is that it has a research station in it. Some of the other ones do not. So you don't need a science hab just to get a research station. You also have all your other workbenches here, along with some storage. Through the door in the back is the battle station. Again, I chose this version of it as it's open and clean looking. The hab also gives us plenty of crew spots, so you'll be able to take advantage of a max crew capacity.
And that is the whole ship. I want to thank everyone for sticking to the end. If you like this build, check out my other Starship designs on my channel. Comment below and let me know what you think. I'm Team Scorpio, and I'll see you in the next video.